Hi, this is Natalie Lander, voice of Kinsey, Tara Branford, Stargirl, and many others. You are listening to a W2Mnet podcast. You can visit W2Mnet.com for other podcasts about entertainment, video games, sports, and wrestling. They also have articles, reviews, and columns. You are listening to Video Games to the Max. Hello and welcome to another episode of Video Games to the Max. Yes, we are still alive and, well, you already heard Mark a few times, so you know he's okay, but I am still alive and this show is still going on the 204th episode and yeah, I mean... San Diego Comic-Con wrapped up. We're still kind of getting a fallout. From that. This is still like the summer doldrums, but we're almost headed to September and the fall. Uh, sorry for my absence. Uh, my girlfriend is not a big gamer, and she also takes up a lot of my time. So by the time... That, that's the bigger one. <laughs> yeah, if I ever... Supposedly we're going to have a system now that she comes back from her vacation uh, where I go home at like 11 or 12 every night. So um, we might have to switch the day that we normally do this, which is Saturday night, Sunday morning to like a Friday night or something. But other than that, we should uh, be good to have a weekly schedule where I don't get told, oh, spend the night and then I can't do anything. So... Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so, Mark, you have been playing a lot of games, I just started kind of playing games again the last couple of nights, so, since you have the long list, uh, I guess go ahead with whatever you want to start out on. Well, if you didn't just help, I bought a, uh, analog Super NT, they're like, Super Nintendo clone thing. Okay. That's really nice. <laughs> uh, so, does it play your games well? Any hiccups or anything? Or um, it didn't play Mega Man X three very well. I I think the cartridge was dirty, so once I cleaned it, it was fine. Uh, everything else has played fine. I think they will finally beat my copy of Super Metroid because my Super Nintendo wouldn't play it correctly. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Yeah, it came with the uh, console, a controller, um, and a like a replica game of Mega Man and Base, which didn't come out in America. So it's like some bootleg cartridge, <laughs> <laughs> but it works fine. I mean, um, and yeah, my the console is also modded to like it has an SD card slot on the side of it for firmware updates, but like people just made it so you can just load games off it. <laughs> so that's nice. Yeah, it doesn't work with every game. Like, there's, like, 30 or so games it doesn't work with because they have, like, special chips or something, but most games it works fine, and it works, you know. So, basically, you have your own emulator as well. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, the games I've been playing for review have been uh, Mario Maker 2, uh, Attack on Titan 2, and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Whatever the whole subtitle is. <laughs> uh, the Black Order. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, since uh, Ultimate Alliance is the most recent, and it kind of goes with uh, a lot of what we're going to be talking about on the podcast with Comic Con stuff. Uh, and we'll we'll talk about all the DLC announcements, I guess, as you get through this. But yeah, I mean, how do you? I, I don't think anybody was expecting a great game or whatever but from what i've heard this is a lot more challenging and strategic than the other well it's games artificially challenging because every boss and even some like mini bosses or strong enemies has like a stamina bar so you have to deplete that and then once you do that like it puts the enemies in like a weakened state so you can actually damage your health so it's a lot like the battle system from final fantasy 13 
that whole, okay. like, you have to, like, you know... A stagger them? Yeah, essentially. Which sucks. <laughs> it's not fun. Yeah, that is kind of annoying. Because, um, uh, like, the first two games didn't have that. They just had, you know, just keep beating at the boss and eventually do right. it. Right. Um, so, the biggest problem with the game, aside from that, is it's, like, very... It seems very cheaply made... And you can okay. tell like, that the same developers didn't work on it as the first two games, or even like the you know the old X Men Legends games. Like this game right, is made right. by Team Ninja, which is super weird. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I think Raven made the first few games at least. Right, but I mean, you could sort of make the case that Musou games are not too far from that, so. It's I mean, not totally out of their realm. Yeah, but those games have, like, big environments. And, like, this, this game is the most, like, directed game in the world. Like, there's no, like, hub system or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like, once you beat a boss, a character just gather around us, you can talk to him, which amounts to nothing. And then you just keep going on the same, like, the same path. I know you don't play your Switch portably much, but I've heard that it gets really small when you play on portable. That would not As surprise well. me. Like, the camera yeah. is pretty gnarly in this, and even on the TV, and so is, like, the frame rate. Like, uh, me and Yens are playing it, and we're in Wakanda right now, and there was, like, some story thing that happened, and the frame rate was, like, you could just see it tanking on the console, and it's like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they don't have the excuse of, well, we were doing it for PS4 and Xbox as well. This was only this system. Yeah, so. I mean, they only, yeah, they only made it for Switch, so, like, I don't know, the roster is fine, um, I'm using that cheat for that glitch, so, like, last night, um, Jens was, I think, Scarlet Witch, and I had a team of three Hulks. <laughs> nah. Um, so, so thing. what, for people that don't know this glitch, what do you... So, you can, oh. certain characters have, like, uh a one-player trial. Like, you, you can only complete, like, a mission with, like, one character. But you can okay. glitch the character to have multiples in your own team. Ah. Uh, so instead of having, like, you know, Spider-Man, Captain America, Wolverine, and the Hulk, you can just have four Hulks. And th this has the added, added benefit of you leveling up a lot quicker because all the Hulks are get, gaining experience. Okay. Um, that's so like one, one weird thing is like in, normally in a game like this, each, each player would have two characters you could switch between. Like if you wanted, if you and I play like you would have two characters to play with and so would I, in this game, the host character, host player has three characters and the guest character only has one. Oh, that sucks. It's not fun <laughs> because you can't switch between characters. Like, on the fly. Yeah, so it's that's... super weird. I wonder if that's something they could... Patch change? I'd, I'd hope, because I think the other games had that. Where I could just yeah, because, I mean... One. I mean, yes, ideally it is cool if you could play with four people, but that's not the case for a lot of folks. And getting people the best chance to enjoy themselves, which, you know, giving them two and two, yeah. it's a lot better. That's, well, like, Divinity has that, for example. Like, that's good. That's actually a good counter, because that has, that's also, a four, like, a four-player game, nominally. Um, and even, like, the old MUA games, like the, like, the first one and two, you can just switch between whoever. Um, right. Also, what's really funny is they make a big deal out of, I think it's called synchronization attacks. Like, you know, you attack an enemy, and then, you're, like, another character joins in for, like, more damage. But mm -hmm. it's handled in the most half-assed way possible. <laughs> like you barely see the prompt when the when the AI does it, and like the way you do it, you have like two different power wheels. But they don't explain that well at all. Like nothing in this game is explained well. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, uh, I've also like apparently they changed the. Uh, the armor system is not like it doesn't really have names. It's kind of all generic. Well, there is no armor. I mean, it's just 
it's it, you're basically well, filling out like, a like the grid. the loot you're picking up or whatever. The... No, there's no there's no loot at all. Oh. Like that's what was a... cool about the other games was you picked up stuff that had names and you could find out what yeah. it was and how it connected to the. Well, that's what I mean by like it feels like this game's like kind of done on the cheap. Like there's no loot system or inventory at all. It didn't take me until last night to figure out like you can actually power up individual like attacks, like special attacks. Like there's a mm-hmm. menu for it, which the game doesn't tell you about. <laughs> and it's like, wh- why did you hide this? Like, this is a core part of what, like something like a game like this. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, that's especially considering it being a being made for a Nintendo system. You would think that they would make sure that let's put a big tutorial in here. Yeah. Because like you could have kids playing this with their parents, you know? Yeah. I mean, I replayed the first area a few times. I was using that glitch to power up certain characters. And yeah, the tutorial is just like laughably bad. And considering uh, Nintendo uh, published this, like you you would have thought that, yeah, Nintendo, they're good for tutorials and stuff, but I guess not. Uh, it might probably cost them too much if they would have put more of a tutorial in there or something. Maybe, but I mean, they have an area, like they just have an area, just have like, a character go like, oh, this is how you strengthen characters or this is like why you want to do special attacks like synchronization attacks and stuff like that well isn't synchronization attacks like a bigger deal in this one no well they, i mean they kind of are but i mean the mua 2 had that also this one has like this ultimate attack thing which you can like activate and then you can draw another your other characters to do it as well if they have like the meter filled but that's very much right. similar to the second one only worse <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how's the story? Is it uh, worth going through? Is it nonsense or? It's very much like, um, like an Avengers movie. Like it's very, you know, it's all centered around the stupid Infinity Gems. The MCU. It's, it's kind of, yeah. Except like this has like Mar- this has like X Men and like it, it uh, oh, what, uh, the Inhuman stuff and you know, characters like that. Okay. Well, well, that's good though. At least it's not totally just. Hey, here's what Disney's doing. Yeah, if it thing. was just if it was just MCU, I would have not wanted this game because that's incredibly boring to me. Like that's the problem with that Avengers game that Eidos was making. It's like yeah, uh, uh, not to mention it. It looks bad. Yeah, but... I mean that's the other problem. Uh, so uh, to further that point, uh, the I mean one of these is obviously. Uh, very much in MCU, and he is going to further his story and something else we're going to talk about. But uh, Loki will be an unlockable character. Yep. Uh, this is a DLC expansion pass or the first wave and all that. Uh, they also promised, I think, until 2020 they're going to have outfits for all the characters. So uh, you can – which I think if you get the expansion pass, you just get all the yeah. all the outfits. Uh, the two free characters are Cyclops and Colossus, which I always I'm, liked using Cyclops in this yeah, game because he's fun. I'm really, really looking forward to Cyclops. <laughs> uh, Moon Knight is one of my favorite characters, and he's coming with Blade, Punisher, and Morbius as part of the Marvel Knights pack. That one is actually – you have to get the expansion pass, uh, which yeah. is $20, uh, to uh, unlock them. So – uh, and I guess uh, more characters will be detailed at a later date whenever they uh, figure those out. But And what do you think? I mean, they did reveal that there's going to be an X-Men pack, a Fantastic Four pack uh, later. So uh, what do you think about, so far, DLC-wise for the game? Uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to Cyclops. Colossus might be fun. Like, I guess it's fine to have, like, lower tier characters as part of DLC because they have a lot of like heavy hitters already in it. Um, mm. I mean, a lot of times you just probably have like a fantastic four, you know, get all four characters or something. Right. Um, the X-Men is a little more nebulous <laughs> because there's a lot of X-Men characters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you already have three of them announced. Plus, is there anybody besides Wolverine in the regular roster? No, but beast would be an obvious pick because they already have like a model like he's like a non-playable character but yeah i imagine storm and oh storm's in it also 
I actually just okay. we, unlo- we unlocked her last night. Um, uh, Nightcrawler's usually... Uh... He, he is in the game. We haven't got him yet, though. Okay, uh, okay. I would like Rogue. She'd, be, she'd probably be fun. Um, Gambit, obviously. Iceman. Yeah, Gambit, I think you kind of can't have him. Iceman, he's been in all the games, so... Yeah. Um, and I usually like playing as him. I like... In games like this, I prefer, like, ranged characters, like Cyclops or Iceman, personally. Hopefully it's not Jean Grey, because isn't Scarlet Witch, like, very much like Jean Grey in this game? Uh, kind of. Like, Jean, like Scarlet Witch in this game is, like, really overpowered. <laughs> it's, it's pretty yeah. funny. Uh, Deadpool's well, also in it. Okay. Um, and I yeah, think Magneto so, is also. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, so far, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, fun to play with gens, but not... Yeah, it has some and, caveats, but if you have like, another player, at least, then it's a lot more bearable. <laughs> all right, so uh, this this game, uh, I you know came out about a month ago, and it it uh, wound up being the number one selling game uh, for June Super Mario Maker Two. I thought uh, you were gonna say Attack on Titan Two. <laughs> no. Uh, and, and incredibly did that in like three days so yeah. or two days. So that's uh, an accomplishment for Nintendo there. Uh, right behind it, Crash Team Racing got the highest lunch, launch month for any Crash game ever. Uh, and second, Mortal Kombat, uh, a bunch of old games aside from Days Gone kind of took the list after that. Mortal Kombat 11, Grand Theft Auto 5, amazingly. Minecraft is back in there again. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Spider-Man, which was announced as the number one highest-selling uh, superhero game ever for the United States uh, recently, uh, beating out Batman Arkham City and Arkham Knight. I was surprised Knight sold more than Asylum. Uh, NBA 2K19 Mario Kart 8 again, and Days Gone right there at number 10, uh, which uh, that review is now up on uh, w2net.com, so you can go uh, read that too. And... Yeah, I mean, at Nintendo, the Switch is the highest-selling console, of course, since it's the only console that's new-ish. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Mario Maker, is it really just more Mario Maker, or yeah, is there something else to it? Uh, the editor isn't quite as good, as I imagine, from Wii U, the Wii U version, um, because you're only using a, a pretty small screen or a controller interface, which is too busy or like too this is too much going on to make it interesting or to make it like make sense um but like playing the game is fine like i hit a lot of I, I beat the story mode that was pretty fun um i was getting ready to make some courses a few nights ago kind of for review and then my controller broke um so that's fun oh your uh, joy con drifted yeah but it won't like undrift no, it, and I can recenter it, but then it'll kind of start leaning to the left. Or, like, actually, Mario Maker was the worst because I went in the menu and, the, like, the menu was, like, freaking out. Because it was, like, well, I bet with that the... game, it's even more because anytime you move, you can't put a block or yeah, whatever. So It was, like, oscillating between, like, two menu options. And I'm like, I'm not touching this analog stick. What the hell is going on here? But... Yeah, Mario Maker's good. Like, I'm happy to f- play it, because I didn't play the Wii U version, because I didn't have a Wii U. <laughs> I had the 3DS version. It was fun. I'm not a level maker person, but I loved playing other people's levels, and... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, kind of um, the same way. I, I, I'm, I mean, Mar- Mario's a lot easier to make a level for than, like, a little big planet or, like, a lot of other games. So, mm-hmm. once I can actually start making levels, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> I did. Did you see the uh, Final Fantasy VII remake thing and somebody made it in dreams? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I heard I'm sure that was rather elaborate. <laughs> I've heard dreams is fine. Like I actually played the beta when it came out, um, but it has like no buzz or like no one ever talks about it. Well, because it has no like it's basically for creators. The story mode is not out there yet. That's kind of what the only thing I'm interested in. Because uh, yeah. I've seen, I read the Game Informer piece on it. It looks really cool, but. Until that comes out, I really just don't have any feeling for it, it because... I mean, it reminds me a lot of that 
Project Spark thing that came out. Yeah. Like, uh-huh, for five Xbox. Years ago. Yeah. Where that's all it was and like no one talks about it. Yeah. Uh well, since we were already on the subject because of Mario Maker 2, uh, the big news happening sort of this week is everything to do with bad things with Nintendo. The week of four, which we'll still talk about that, is announcements of new Switches. But right now, the Switch itself, the one that's out there, has this little issue that's been cropping up a lot more recently. Uh, You know, it was an issue at launch, but just right now, for some reason, I think we're getting into that a year and a half. If you have a launch Switch, you've had it for almost a year and a half now. Uh, well, you don't. Two years old, uh, I think, right? It's March 2017 is when it came out. Yeah, so, so two years. Oh, two years, okay. So two and a half years. I have a launch Switch. I don't really – I play mine portably most of the time, so I don't – I've never run into the Joy-Con drift thing. But, See, uh, you only, know. I only noticed it like four days ago, which is really bizarrely coincidental like to the whole like – report thing Mm -hmm. like i was i was playing attack on titan 2 and my character just started moving to the left and i was like i'm not doing that and then i loaded up mario maker 2 and then that's when i really noticed it and i'm like well this sucks (laughs) (laughs) and i have another friend online who it's happening to him right now as well yeah i see a lot of people complaining about it on twitter and uh some of the facebook groups that happen to pop up on my wall yeah just uh, really complaining and uh, in fact some people have complained enough that a class action lawsuit has been filed on Nintendo uh, Chemicals I swear some people's last names or something uh, Chemicals, Swartz, Kreiner and Donaldson Smith, CSK and D that's a mouthful uh, they better be some good lawyers there has filed a class action lawsuit against Nintendo in the Western District of Washington for violating various consumer protection statuses and various warranty and common law claims, saying the Joy-Con controllers are defective. Uh, If you don't know what Joy-Con drift is, it means that basically when you're trying to register movement, the joystick uh, just starts interfering with gameplay and moving by itself, as uh, as, uh, Mark already kind of pointed out. Uh, Now, Nintendo was charging $40.00. If you've had already run out of your warranty to fix your Joy-Con, uh, now all of a sudden this week they are not only doing them for free, they are refunding you if you paid. So yeah. obviously this lawsuit has made them have to pay a little bit more attention to this Joy-Con drift thing. I mean, what's eventually going to happen is Nintendo will have like a big replacement program, a warranty program that says like, Oh, if your joy kind of breaks in the next five years, you can get it replaced for free. If you, Mm -hmm. if you want cash instead, we'll send you a check. Uh, I mean, it won't be like hundreds of dollars or anything, but probably like the price of a joy con. Yeah. Uh, Which, and that's about it. Like, that's what they'll do. The the problem is like controllers are expensive. (laughs) Like the joy. Yeah. And if you want to get a pair, they're $80. Yeah. It's like, fuck that. Yeah, it's it. No, it definitely is. I mean, you can get one if you want as well, but it's just, yeah. Um, I mean, this is obviously making people worry about what's going to happen with the Switch Lite because it basically just has the uh, Joy Cons snapped to where they cannot be moved. Um, yeah. Again, I've never had the problem where it only started happening to me a week ago, so. For you, I would say don't knock on wood. Like, it shouldn't happen. Like, hopefully it doesn't happen to you tomorrow or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, most of the games that I play, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so, um, like, the one game I'm playing on the Switch right now, it's all menu-based, so it wouldn't matter at all. But um, I'm guessing if I played Celeste again, it would be a big problem if that all of a sudden started happening. So, uh, you know, I think it's just it's something that Nintendo should have addressed a long time ago. It shouldn't take a lawsuit. For, and this is so weird for Nintendo. Normally they are very uh, proactive about making sure that you are happy with your system and, and everything else. And it's so weird that uh, it's taken a lawsuit in order for Nintendo to finally go, oh, well, we need to do something. Uh, especially when you're going around announcing a new Switch that has, you know, 
uh, double the battery life of the original. And then you're announcing the Switch Lite, which uh, is basically like a Game Boy Switch. And it cost a hundred dollars less, and and I, I mean I'm kind of considering the Switch Lite for um, my daughter uh, because she likes to ha- have her tablet, and you know she, if she would maybe with like Animal Crossing or Pokemon or something, uh, be able to get, I can get her into playing some games or whatnot. But um, yeah, it's just this is. I'm glad they're addressing it. I hope they do do a program like you're saying because um, at least this thing where they're doing it for free works as well. Just I think you're going to have so many at some point they're going to have to do something. Uh, I would I, – I think Nintendo's going to have to wind up paying some money though. I mean if they replace it for free though, the only money they should really pay is like postage or you know. The no, I meant like the lawsuit. They're going to pay. They're going to settle. Something's going to happen. There's just way yeah, too many of these. Everyone's going to get like, you know, 10 bucks or something. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just saying the, the money will be big. Everybody's getting 10 bucks, but they're going to pay some money because they didn't fix this issue by themselves. Yeah. Earlier. What's really fun, weird and funny is I hooked the Joy-Con up to my PC and I had no problem there. It was only like playing Switch games. Right, it's a switch. And then also, uh, I mean, the N64 had similar issues. That analog stick would, like, wear out after a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this isn't that new a problem for Nintendo. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think it also depends on if you... I think people that move, take their switch out and they take it with them a lot more and use it a lot more. I think that also has something to do with it. Then if somebody that uses it here and there and keeps it docked most of the time. Um, That's me. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I mean, again, it. you haven't had yours that long, so. Well, I got mine last year around January, so I've had it a year and a half. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, it's just weird that like it happened to me but not you or that it just happened to me within the past four days well continuing with uh switch stuff i guess you mentioned attack on titan 2 yeah um i played the first attack on titan this is the muso game by the way if you uh dynasty warriors (laughs) yeah dynasty warriors type thing this so what's special about this switch version i know it has like a different like a subtitle Yo, I have no idea. <laughs> Ask me anything about Attack on Titan, I will have no clue. I just took it because... Well, Attack on Titan is awesome, and they announced the final season of the anime just recently, but uh, so, uh, that aside... <laughs> like, the gameplay is interesting, because it's kind of like a reverse Spider-Man. Like, you're swinging mm-hmm. on the ground yeah. and, like, buildings to, like, move around, but you're not swinging in the sky. And it's not like a traditional Dynasty Warrior where there's, like, hundreds of enemies on screen. It's like, you know... You have to kill the titans that yeah, are pretty titans big. Yeah, on screen at max, if that. But you have to, like, swing mm-hmm. on to them and then cut their heads off or cut their body parts off. Uh, the problem with that game is the Switch can't handle it well. And so, like, I figured it on, wouldn't be able to. Yeah, the swinging on enemy stuff, like, you're supposed to time it to, like, if you swing on them correctly or, like, you time the button press, you do more damage. But the timing mm-hmm. is really inconsistent. So it's, like... The training mode was fine because the enemies are stationary, like they're just cardboard statues. But when enemies have to move around, it's like, oh man, the system is struggling. <laughs> so my review of that game will be, if you can, buy it on PS4 instead or Xbox One. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a there's a a say, you can also get it on sale, which you probably won't be able to on the Switch because they don't do sales that are really worth anything unless they're talking about indie games. So yeah. well, there's, like, I think Final Battle is like their DLC. Like, it, it's supposed mm-hmm. to add like a bunch of whole new characters and stuff like that. But it's like, eh, right? I I don't know who this Aaron guy is. <laughs> so it's like whatever. <laughs> I assume he's in the anime. That's that's my. <laughs> oh, Aaron! Yeah, he's yeah. the main guy in the anime. Yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, the game itself is fun, or you know, it would seem to be, but it's just the Switch just can't handle it that well. It'd be like trying to port, like, 
Just Cause 3 to the Switch. It's like, this is, this is a bad move. Like, don't do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... I mean, speaking of just sometimes they just want stuff to play on the Switch. So it's like, I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure Wolfenstein Youngblood doesn't play as well as the PS4 or Xbox. Yeah, but Wolfenstein is also mm-hmm. a much smaller in scope game. Like it's craft, you know, it's crafted levels that you can break apart, break, you know, break down better than you, here's a town swing across it. Or that's what, uh, Oh, what is it? Red Faction Gorilla did. Like, it mm-hmm. drastically scaled down the frame rate to make it playable on the Switch. Yeah, but I, I don't know. It just. It's still. You could see it have issues yeah. when it's evil played on Switch. I mean, I think Red Faction literally has like a performance mode and like a graphics mode or something. Well, speaking of Bethesda, they did uh, bring Doom 1, 2, and 3. To the Switch and the other consoles. And then you have to get a Bethesda account for it to work. And that was laughable. Well, they delisted the Xbox 360, Xbox One original versions, which took a lot of people off. And then, yeah, having to sign up for games that did not require it in the first place. It's like, what are you guys doing? Like at that point, I just I just make up a phony email address just to spite you know, I don't know right. why companies I don't know why companies are so like gung ho about getting your email address. Like, you, I assume your laptop has an Nvidia card, right? Yes. Like you have to. It has to be updated your, all the freaking time. Yeah, you have to <laughs> give them your email or like make an account with them to upgrade upgrade your graphical driver. Uh huh. Like, kind yeah. of bullshit is this? Uh, why do you need that? <laughs> yeah. Just they're let like, me oh. upgrade it. It's on my computer. They're, well, their their classic response is like, "Oh, so you can provide better upgrades or you know important product information." And it's like, "No, you, you just want it for like marketing reasons or you know whatever nefarious thing you're gonna do." Like, leave me alone. I just want to get a new driver. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, Doom. That that's a bad situation. But also, Doom I don't, it was never very fun to me. So. Yeah, uh, I mean that's it's fine. It's just it's funny that Bethesda didn't and, uh, think about man. These games are old. Why do you need that? Now they're trying to say like, oh, it was a mistake, or like, oh, it's to prov- provide like some bonus content or something. It's like no, because you required it. Like that's not a mistake. There's no there's no way to opt out. They're saying, oh, we're yeah. gonna patch it so you don't need to need it now. It's like too little, too late. <laughs> Exactly. So, yeah. Um, so, how's that cadence of Hyrule? It was good. I beat it. It was fun. Uh, it's weird because it's very roguelike. So, like, I didn't get every epi- every weapon or item in the game because I don't think you, I don't think you can. <laughs> like on every on like your, a run, like I was missing like the leaf mm-hmm. and like some other crap. Uh but I mainly played as Link. It was a lot of fun. It was hard. Like I'm, the timing for me actually got worse as I went along a little. Um, but it, yeah, great music also, and yeah, well worth the twenty five bucks I think it was. Yeah, I mean Zelda music is awesome. So that was always one of the best decisions when they announced that game that you know you're gonna get uh, really good music out of that. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, anything else you wanna um, you wanna bring the, up here? The last thing I'll mention is I bought a PS Classic. <laughs> Why? It was twenty bucks. Still not worth it. Yeah, it didn't come with an AC adapter, which I found interesting. Like I'm like the other, all the others do. Like, what the hell is your problem? <laughs> uh. Also, oh I mean, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead. Go on. Oh, I was going to say, how's uh, Bloodstained? Yeah, I was going to mention know. that. I got that like a month ago or whenever it got released. Uh, I beat it. I S-ranked it, actually. Um, ah, how easy was that? Not easy, because I had like, the disc version, which ah. actually did make it a little easier. Like, they were patching the game to make it harder. 
Um, oh, really? Which sucks. <laughs> so I kept, having, I kept having to, like, also, the, like, the di- like, the original version was kind of janky in spots. Like, there's, like, one area in particular that you can't get through because, like, the game kind of glitches. So I kept having to, like, upgrade the game get through like an area and then down downgrade the game back to what like the disc version because there's a uh infinite item and money duplication glitch in the original version so i took mm-hmm. advantage of that <laughs> <laughs> nice like you can you can basically make items and then instead of getting like one item you get like three and then if you yeah. make them again if you make three again you get like nine so you can just keep duplicating items that way and, like, keep making more items and then selling off, like, the excess and, yeah, just keep doing that over and over. Um, it's a fantastic Metroidvania, though. I really liked it. Glitches just don't off. get it on Switch, apparently. Yeah, I heard that, that. I've seen videos and that Switch version looks nasty. Oh, that sucks because that game would be perfect for portable, but... Um, I actually just bought this Steelbook case... Like a few days ago, at Best Buy, it was like fifteen bucks there. And hey, like why not? eBay is like fifty, <laughs> so it's like I'm damn yeah. Go for the Best Buy route, then. <laughs> Save you some money. Yeah, that's um, that's exactly. But yeah, it's if you like that genre at all, it's another one of those, and it's really good. Like it's honestly one of the best Kickstarter Kickstarter games I've played. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, ringing endorsement, except for, um, except for on Switch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I have been uh, playing two games. Uh, one of them is sort you of similar. <laughs> uh, well, you know, inadvertently. <laughs> that was. Uh, I don't blame your editor's that. fault. <laughs> um, it might have also been because. I guess he gives you more games than me, and I don't know if he just uh, decided to, like, oh, well, let's just give it to him. Or because I technically had the, the Dragon Quest, the RPG. Oh. Um, he, I didn't, when you brought that up, I didn't say anything because I was like, I don't want him to feel bad. Or yeah, it's, it's a weird I, situation. but <laughs> Yeah. Normally it doesn't happen. Normally it's like, when somebody sends an email, hey, here's what's there, and you don't have two people that literally send an email for the same game within, like, two minutes of each other. Yeah. Um, oh, somebody made a uh, Switch uh, Pro Controller with a headphone jack in it, so that's yeah, cool. Yeah, I guess someone ported Android over to the Switch also. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me, honestly. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, so I've, I've one of them is very similar to a game and studio that just basically shut down Defiant Development and uh, the Hand of Fate games. Uh, I like those games, so sadly I'm sad to see uh, them having to shut down because, in their words, they couldn't handle the speed of change of the industry, which, to be fair, it really has changed a lot, and that's kind of the two games they they made uh two did improve on one but there were some things about two that i didn't necessarily like either yeah it wasn't as good i get what they didn't really expand the idea far enough yeah um so i'm playing slay the spire which is sort of similar in the way that you're going up a a roguelite roguelike path you get a character. There's five characters. Uh, you start as the warrior character, then you can keep unlocking the other ones. I played with the warrior. I did one run as the warrior, and one as the. I guess it's the thief. I'm not sure. It's like a thing with a skull. Uh, he might be a mage. I'm not sure. Uh, which uh, he does a lot of poison attacks or, or whatever. Um, I got to the end and got killed with the boss having half health. The first time, the second time, I got killed with the boss having 10 HP left. So I haven't beaten, I haven't slayed the Spire uh, yet in the two runs that I've done. Um, But it's a fun game. Like, I like the just, it's card-based, so, and you, it's basically just a card game. 
and you unlock it. There's predetermined things. You either uh, can upgrade your car, upgrade a card, unlock yeah. more car. You unlock more cards every time you get through a a section. Like you beat uh, enemies. Uh, there's like mini bosses. There's um, a thing where it lets you decide whether you want to up, you know, heal your HP or upgrade another card. So it's it's really interesting. And there's like four paths uh, that you can take as well. So if you didn't like that path that you went on, you can go on a different one with that same character next time. Um, so it's a game that you can easily come back to. It's on Switch uh, as well as the other systems. So it's something that's really easy for Switch. Just pull out your Switch and um, cost, was it like 25 bucks? But Probably. I feel like being able to replay it it's easily replayable, so I feel like the twenty five bucks is uh, well worth it. Um, yeah, I feel that way about uh, Cadence of Hyrule also. Uh, the other game is Dragon Quest Builders Two. Uh, I'm not that far into it. Um, it's the perfect game to like play a little bit, put it down, play a little bit more, put it down. Um, uh, I unfortunately the code that we were given was, or I was given was on PS4. So I'm sure on switch it's even better for that. Cause you can lay in your bed and I think do that. that one might have worse music though. Now that's a surprise me, but it's not like the, it's the guy that does the dragon quest music is such an asshole that, uh, a lot of times the games don't have the best music until, they could put orchestrated versions in them later or something like that. Um, like you're getting with the, uh, the switch version that's coming out later for dragon quest 11. So, yeah, I mean, I like it. I didn't play the first one. So, uh, I liked that the first one had the idea of you get dragon quest and it has objectives and there's a story and it's cause I like the genuine like idea of Minecraft. I just don't like just being thrown into something and Oh, here do whatever. Yeah, you want more of a plot, or like more direction at least. Yeah, a structure, which is what this game gives you. Uh, plus, I like the you know the Toriyama uh, drawn characters and everything else. You you create your character. Uh, it's it's very simple. It's there's not a lot of uh, creation to that character. Um, and then you start off on your journey, which you start on a boat. You wind up on an island, and then you have to basically go to other islands and get stuff from those islands to build up your island. And there's a story that goes along with it. The guy, the evil character that destroyed the world the first time, it winds up being inhabited by your friend that goes along with you, but he has amnesia. He doesn't know he's that character. So you kind of get to go through his little story along with yours and this other little girl that wants you to do everything for <laughs> So. <laughs> um, looks like anime hasn't changed that much, but, uh, yeah, no, it's fun so far. Uh, there's like a snapshot mode too. If you're one of, and there's like a bulletin board, you can put it on and stuff like that. I know there's a lot of people that upload those all the time. So yeah, yeah uh, that's, I'll have more, I guess, uh, next week when I, when I played it a lot more, but yeah, so that's as far as what, uh, we've been playing, which is a lot. When you think about it, I don't know what the the time is, how long we've been recording so far, but um, uh, forty five minutes, give or take. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good for mainly talking about just the the games we've been playing. So, like I said, there's not a lot of game news right now. We're in those doldrum uh, months. The big news was that the switch switch announcements. Do you care about either one? Really? I mean, if I could get that upgraded Switch, it'd be nice with the better the better battery. Um, the Switch Mini looks, I think, it looks terrible, and the drawbacks yeah. on it are like too numerous to make it like worthwhile. Why would you but, say drawbacks? Not outside of not being able to dock it, obviously. That's one. Uh, the screen is smaller. Um, the joy the joy kind is not being uh, detachable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the Joy-Con's not being detachable makes sense if you're trying to make it, like, the 2DS version of but, the Switch. I mean, think about, like, you can put, like, a, you know, a 3DS in your pocket. You can't put this thing, in, you know, in your pocket. 
That's why half of it's sticking out. Mm. Like it's not, it depends on what kind of pants you have. Like I have, I took mine to work yesterday because Saturdays are slow, and with the Joy Cons in. My cargo pants that I have, it actually fits the whole thing. But if, yeah. I think if you have jeans or anything else, it wouldn't fit. Well, also, you know, you're a 30-year-old guy wearing 30-year-old pants. You're not a 10-year-old girl, you know, wearing a dress or something. Oh, well, you know? yeah, definitely. definitely. And then also, <laughs> like, it's just not that – it's not that much smaller. <laughs> yeah, the 5.5 to 6.2 – those seven inches make a difference. I mean, yeah, but then because you can't detach the Joy Cons, like, who cares what size of the screen? Like, it's just too long to fit in, you know, a regular yeah. person's, you know, outfit or something. Especially if they're a kid. Oh, no. I mean, when you take the Joy Cons off, it then does fit anywhere because it's a little tablet, basically. But, yeah. um,. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm interested in it just because that $100 less price and it's a bit less, I would imagine it's a bit more sturdy. Um, so if, you know, and I had dropped it or something, I wouldn't feel so. I would really, really want it if they made the like atomic purple because I had the Game Boy Color, the, the atomic purple one. Yeah. If they had chosen that for one of the colors, I would be so down. Uh, but I mean, the turquoise looks one. okay. Yeah, the, the I mean, turquoise one looks okay, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, just... I know the 2DS sold relatively okay, but yeah. it just seems like a downgrade from the 3DS, obviously. And then they made... They did it oh, no, Wii. it definitely is. <laughs> yeah, and, and they did that with the Wii... They made that Wii Mini, which was, like, terrible. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, why are, are you making lesser you know, products like, I mean, Microsoft, and that's what Sony... Nintendo does. They make lesser products and then they come and make the better product, which people are still hoping happens to switch pro. Yeah. I mean, the switch is getting upgraded a little like that. It's having like a new chip and, and yeah, so it'll... battery life and stuff like that. But... Right. Cause well, it's half an hour more. Woo. No, the, the, the new battery is like double the per double the. Well, battery. no, the new one, yes. I'm talking about. They made a big deal about the Switch Lite it has oh, like yeah, a like half an hour out. more battery. Like, like okay, whatever. Uh, but yes, it it can go up to like four and a half to nine hours. So that's really good. If you've never paid the three hundred dollars for a Switch, and you want one that docks to the TV, that's definitely one to go buy. Um, yeah. Obviously, you have to pay attention to the serial number and the red box. Not the white and red box. So, pay attention, parents that aren't gamers. I don't think it's out yet, but yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not, but yeah, because I think the only thing that's coming out this year is the light in September or next no, month. The new, the new Switch is coming out this year, I think, but it's it's not like they're not going to go like out, whole, out. whole new revision or like this is the better Switch. It's, it's pretty right. much like a done in the down low. Because like Microsoft did that too. Like with the Xbox 360s. Oh, that all digital thing is still the stupidest thing ever. No, no, no. I meant like when they, I mean, the original Xbox 360 didn't have like HDMI. So right. Like when, they, when they put that in, they, like they're like, this is a whole new 360. They just did it, you know, kind of like secretly. So it's like, hey, who knows if you got one, like the good one or not. Right. But yeah, That's the, true. Or the Xbox One's sad. It's still funny. <laughs> well, speaking of sad, GameStop, all credit to them. They got to try to find a way to make money. They are going to try to turn their stores into unique experiences by going more retro. And obviously, you can't do this everywhere. Uh, well, uh, but, yeah. I think GameStop, GameStop is in a real hard position. I mean, their stock price is tanking. Every day. Their sales keep tanking. Um, I think it's a problem. I think they should really shut down a lot of stores and make bigger ones. But, like, in my town, there are, like, three game stops within a, like, a three-mile radius of one of each other. Mm -hmm. That's dumb. <laughs> well, like, to be fair, 
how many other how many store like big stores that thought they weren't going to have a problem uh there's others in um, that kind of a radius so i mean there are fast food places like that or like you know starbucks or something but yeah they're doing well like gamestop is not like they should honestly shut down every gamestop in my town and just make one big good one not three small mediocre ones i mean but what do you want in it though uh, tons of statues. <laughs> That's all my GameStops have now, anyway, pretty much. Yes. Uh, if they if they do make that this retro store idea, they should call it Funko Land. That would be good for them. I I the don't fun- know if they want to go back to that name, but they should because let's face it, GameStop is such a tarnished name that there's nowhere else to go but up at this point. Uh, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I mean, like, this idea is not bad. Like, um, have more games there that you can try them so they'll go to the store and perhaps buy something. Um, I think it's just, GameStop is another one that's suffering badly from the digital era, from Amazon, from, from the digital storefronts on the systems themselves. A Sony hampering them where they can't have digital codes even at their stores or online. Uh, you know, even their own online store makes it easier to shop than going to the store itself, which sometimes you'll see a box there and they don't necessarily have the disc for it or it takes them forever to find the damn disc and you're kind of like, oh, I'm just getting out of here. And like um, their trade-in values are ridiculous, uh, you know, um, uh, trade in a game, the most you get is like thirty dollars, and then they're still selling it over there for fifty. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's just it's difficult for people. I mean, they tried that thing with Days Gone, which I haven't heard them say they did it with any other game yet, and I don't know how well that did. Nobody really announced that. I assume it wasn't great, or they would have made a big deal about it. Uh, yeah. I mean. Telling people that you can go into a store and play something on a CRT TV, I don't think that's going to get people in the door. But, you know, whatever. It's a problem problem of also, like, stock. Like, how much retro shit do they have? Or, how you know, there's a pretty finite amount of, like, copies of Chrono Trigger floating around. Is every store going to get one copy? Or, like, is some store going to get, like, eight copies and... Well, well, I mean, you can't really... Like, that's the thing, though. Like, so are you trying to get games in there to get people to come into the store to buy more of these retro games? Or are you just trying to make it a retro yeah, place? Yeah, retro store. And I don't, know um, about, I don't know about, like, your area, but there are already a ton of retro stores around my town. Or, I have know, one, and I forgot where it is. They don't even have a name on the thing. I just happened to see there was old systems in there. Yeah, like there's a there's a uh, I look of a chain place around here called Disc Replay, and that's like the store to go to for like you know retro stuff you know from like Atari on up, and to have yeah. GameStop trying to compete with them is like just laughable on its face because this place at least also gives you cash, not just store credit. Yeah, I mean GameStop gives you cash, not on the retro stuff I think, yeah. but. That, that's the thing. It's just, I feel bad for them. They've tried to make it a geek store. I don't know how much that helps them outside of the crazy yeah, Funko true. people. Well, everything they do uh. just kind of sm- like smacks a desperation. Because they are well, because there's desperate. other stores already doing it. By the time that they, I mean, like Hot Topic was already doing it way before GameStop. Yeah. So... I mean, I mean, the only thing is GameStop's more available, right? Because I don't even... The closest hot topic to me is like 35 minutes away. We got... So, oh, there are hot topics closer to me. I just never go in there. <laughs> I, I know. I'm just saying, like, it depends on you. There's a lot of people that don't have a mall close to them that has yeah. one in it. Like, my closest mall does not have a lot of, like, big stores anymore because, you know, it's... Dying. Um, they're dying. Yeah. So, uh, but... Yeah, it's just it, game stuff. I think is doesn't matter what they do. It's like Toys R Us. 
uh, Toys R Us can shout all they want about they're coming back and, yeah, and whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's not going to happen for them. They're, you're going to have less specialty stores because Amazon sells everything. And Amazon sells it at a very convenient I mean, way. Amazon sells new stuff, sure, but not, they don't really sell retro stuff that well. Unless it's like no. super jacked up. I mean, eBay's right. a lot a lot better for that. Yeah, I mean, there, there's always that secondhand market. I mean, if they can tap into that, right? But that's only a certain amount of people per town per that are really looking for that stuff. You're not and, the majority then, of people coming into GameStop are not looking into that. That also feeds back into like they don't, there's limited stock available mm -hmm. like, are they gonna know. start going on ebay themselves and just to buy up shit just to have it in their stores i don't think so that's a waste of money yeah so and, and they, they have also, such a bad rep that i don't think people want to come into their store and get in their retro stuff that's why i say bring back uncle land <laughs> yeah i mean i think you have a better shot at going to a pawn shop yeah. And bringing in your retro stuff sometimes than you do going to GameStop. Yeah. Um, GameStop just... also, they don't take in expensive games that much anymore. Like, like expensive rare games. Because yeah, because they don't want to give you the money. No, no. Uh, they're getting bootlegs. Oh, God. Like, people, okay. you know, people were rolling in with, like, oh, here's my copy of Chrono Trigger. And GameStop was like, okay, we'll give you 60 bucks for it. Meanwhile, it's like some ten dollar bootleg from eBay. <laughs> oh wow, that's not that sucks. And like, it plays fine technically, but I mean, if you open up the cartridge, you can clear. Like GameStop, a GameStop clerk is not going to open up the cartridge in the store and go, "Oh, this has a black goo on it from like you know, whatever uh, emulator chip this is. This is clearly bootleg." Like they're going to take the time or effort. Like the, the yep, regular store not. might. I mean, a pawn shop wouldn't, but like one of these like local retro stores around here probably would, if it's expensive enough. I get, like if I rolled in with my copy of Mega Man X3, they're gonna probably open it up and see that it's, if it's legitimate or not. <laughs> yep, that is true. It's much easier to tell. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, GameStop's in the situation it's in. You, and it this. will continue to be in that situation. Do you think GameStop's going to, like, when do you think GameStop will fold? Like, within the first, within five years, within ten, within a hundred? <laughs> uh, uh, well, if I'm still living on this earth in a hundred. Uh, so, I would give it, and if it lasts five years, I think they should be happy with themselves at that point. Just, yeah. I can't really see them I, going I past 2025. I think the like the store itself or the company is too monolithic to like really make these changes. Cause they've been talking about like making like, Oh, like a, uh, prototype store for the past few years. And they've like one that looked cool, but I couldn't see. It was also, yeah, the, the problem is like, they don't really want to, it's already probably hard enough to get people to work at a game stop. Oh yeah. Game they don't want to take away. They don't want to take away jobs from these stores, from these people. So, not to mention it costs money to tear down a store and build another one. So, they might just I mean, be like, well, well they're not we're... like wholesale, make, make, like, you know, building a new building, just renting a new space, like a bigger space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, it's going to take a lot. I just don't see that really working with people just so, having. Uh, People organizing online just as well as they do in person now. I don't think you're going to make a retro store and just get people to just go there, you know? Yeah. This one guy I follow on YouTube, he's like a pretty, he used to work at GameStop, and now he's pretty adamant, like he dislikes it. He went dumpster driving at a GameStop like last month and found a fully working Xbox One kiosk that he, he took home. Wow. Like, it came with the Xbox One controllers and, like, working flat-screen TV. Wow, they didn't even try to make sure they broke it they were before they put to, it in there? They just threw it out. Or, you know, they just put it in the dumpster or whatever, or, you know, set it outside. So he just, he just ganked it. <laughs> wow. And he was like, hey, I got a new Xbox One. Or, you know. 
that you can stand up in your living room. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's nuts. I, I really dislike those Xbox, or those, like, what they, I don't know about you, but back in the day, they used to have, like, really cool Nintendo and Genesis, like, kiosks they could play on. Uh-huh, yeah. Like, it had, like, actual games. And right. now it's, like, all, like, just demo crap, or, like, you know, like, you're just watching videos yes. on a screen. And it's like, what, what happened? Like... <laughs> Oh, because they figured that didn't – For some, somebody said that playing it beforehand didn't make a difference. Yeah. That now you can watch videos or what, which is technically sort of true. What do people do now if they really want to find out? They go watch somebody streaming. Yeah. And they figure out if they like it or not. Um, so. All right. Well, uh, 40, Warhammer 40K is getting a live action series. Um the creator of Amazon Prime's Man in the High Castle is uh, adapting it for TV. Um, you I'm, know, uh, I'm interested. I'll, yeah, it it's based off the uh, novel Eisenhorn as well, not not the games or anything, but yeah, well, there'll, there'll be a chain sword. That's all I care about. I know people that are big into the Warhammer 40K, so. I'm sure there's an audience for this. I mean, this is kind of like the response to like The Witcher, I guess, on Netflix, essentially. Hey, it could work if they do it right. Yeah. The big question is if they do it right. Yeah, that's... I mean, Amazon's pretty good about doing things right, but this is a... Hopefully, uh, Frank Spotnitz has got... I know him. Uh, I mean, isn't he the Breaking Bad guy? Oh, no, it's Vince Gilligan, sorry. Frank yeah. Spotness, I think he used to work on X Files though. Ah. Well hopefully he really has the heart to stick it out and make sure this is good. Yeah. Because it would suck if uh if it's just kinda put on Amazon to say you made a show about this and it sucks. Yep. And before we get into the SCCC stuff, uh Hideo Kojima um took his stab at discussing streaming in games, saying that gaming will be streaming too, drawing a direct line between the birth of movies in the theater, going experience of television, and now to streaming. In the new future, games and movies will come closer in a similar category. So I think we're going into an era with a lot of possibilities. It will not just be interactive or non-interactive. There will be something in between as well. So in the next five years, everything will change. Movies, music, games, how we distribute, how we share with each other will definitely change as art. Um... He's crazy. <laughs> I don't think we're going into streaming that quickly. No. If he I, were to I, say we're going to go fully digital in five years with gaming, there that line of thinking I would buy. Well, did he see? But that, not streaming. Did you see the Google Stadia thing recently? Like, I guess yeah, the SDCC thing. When they're like, they kind of just brushed off bandwidth concerns, or like. We think companies are going to improve their service. It's like, based on what? Like, you think they would have already, but they don't. And you're the, you're like, the only one that seems to care is Comcast. Everybody else, they're fine with whatever they got. And also, like, Google had the chance to make a better internet. Or they had that Google Fiber thing, and they washed their hands of it. Well, like, now they got their own phone thing, right? The Google Fi that they're trying to come out with? Yeah, it's going to be a huge failure as well. And it's like, if Google Fiber had come to my town, I would have me- immediately got it. I would have ditched Comcast. Oh, me too. And would, like, let's do this. But they didn't. And why would you expect other companies to pick up your slack? Like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't get it. Uh, Google has abandoned so many different things. I can't trust them. Yeah. Supposedly... I, 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 mean, I think Stadia is going to be a, a huge failure, honestly. But me too, shame, uh, especially of. with the oh, they want you to pay ten dollars to have their service so you can play the games in four K, and then you have to buy every game on their store. You get one free game. Woohoo! Yeah. And it'll probably be the same crap that's at the Epic Store, like Limbo, or you know. Games that have come out five years I, ago. Or I could see Google paying. They said the first one's going to be Destiny 2, I think. That already came for free to PC, and it's going yeah. free to play as well. So. Like, okay, 
who cares? It's like, oh, you're getting, you're getting Destiny 2 for free. It's like, I can't already get that on Steam. Like, I mean, not... I guess if you haven't played Destiny at this point yeah. and have the time for it, because it's going um, even more MMO than it was before, so it's... Right. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I just don't, I don't believe in it because it's, it's Google and it's just too many walls and, and too many issues, uh, for them to look, if you don't have a system and you live in it, you live in a town where you have great internet and you just want to play one of those games, but maybe it'll work for you, but here, here's, here's the yeah. thing. How many of those people exist? Like how many people live in a good, live in a town with great internet, but don't have a system? One, because most people that li that live in towns have systems, or if you don't have good internet, you're not gonna have a system. So yeah, and it's like, and these systems are so they're getting lower and lower in price because you're going into the PS5 and Xbox whatever era. Yeah. Um, that they could literally probably buy a system for almost the same price, like refurbished for the same price as you're gonna get the whole pack of Google Stadia. Yeah, and the games are gonna be yeah. much cheaper. Because yeah. you can get them on disc also. And, and you can so get them on have... sale. Yeah. They go on sale a lot. The Stadia sale is going to be what? Like five games? I mean, that's the thing. It's just... I don't... Right now, they have to really go out there and prove it to me. Yep. I just don't trust it at all. Nope. Because, yeah, look at their track. And even during the SDCC thing, like the guy, he would not give like a date or like we intend to support this for years or anything like that. He would not confirm how long Google would support it. It's like, that's warning sign. Number one, that you guys, yeah, like, exactly. Falls in the first month, you guys are going to pull the plug immediately. And then Microsoft at least is saying, this is an aside thing. This is an extra thing. We're not making this our only thing. Yeah. And you know, that's smart. That's the way you do it. Yep. So, all right, so let's get into Comic-Con stuff. Uh, might as well start with the biggest thing that gets announced at these, which is Marvel Phase 4. And officially, this now begins with Disney Plus uh, coming really soon in November. And in fact, Hulu is offering Disney Plus as an add-on. So you don't have to get out of the Hulu launcher to get Disney Plus if you don't want to. Uh, so Marvel Phase 4 is going to begin November 6, 2020 with The Eternals. Uh, it's going to have Angelina Jolie, Salma Hayek, uh, Richard Madden, a few other folks as some of The Eternals here. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, it's going to air in, in 2020 on Disney+. Plus. WandaVision is going to air in 2021, Spring. And it's also going to have a tie-in with the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which comes out May 7, 2021. Um, so that's cool because that means you're going to have TV and movie tie-ins for the first time, aside from the little bit of uh, – was it Civil War and, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or whatever? Well, they had like – I forget her name – uh, they had like a Thor character crossing over occasionally. I think it was like, Jamie Alexander. Um, uh, okay. She was on Agents of Shield like once or twice. Uh, Loki is also it. spring 2021, which they did say basically you're going to find out what happened to Loki after he touches the Tesseract and takes it. Yep. Um, the Marvel's What If thing is summer 2021. And really a lot of the characters, a lot of the majority of the actors are coming back to reprise their roles, which is pretty great. Um, the Hawkeye show is coming fall 2021, which is going to have Jeremy Renner and Kate Bishop uh, in it. You're going to be know more of him as Ronan, and also he's going to be teaching his daughter uh, what it means to be a hero without superpowers. Um uh, Black Widow is May 1st, 2020. You're going to find about a Budapest, finally, and uh, other things um, as well. Uh, Rachel Weiss is going to be in it as Molina, which is pretty cool. And uh, probably the biggest surprise is Thor 4 is going to be Thor Love and Thunder, and Natalie Portman is going to be female Thor. Uh, so, yeah, uh, November 1st, 5th, 2021. 
Yeah, it's it's funny. I saw a column uh, or a recent article about like why Natalie Portman's back, and it was a it was a kind of fluff piece. Like, like oh, she met with Taika Waititi, and you know he got her back essentially. And I was just thinking, yeah, I'm sure it wasn't Disney backing up a dump truck full of cash for her instead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess she doesn't draw or anything. Uh, also, like, do you think? I mean, she's not going to play female Thor, I don't think. That's what they said she was doing. No, I, I mean... Natalie Portman is confirmed for the role of female Thor. I mean, maybe, but female Thor looks very different from her. Like, that's the whole point. Uh, I mean, they could just change her hair or whatever. Yeah, but, well, female Thor is tall and muscular. <laughs> Natalie Portman is not either of those things. Uh, it's, I don't think they're going to do that with her. They're going to take some liberties there. Also, uh, I mean, I think they confirmed or something that uh, Valkyrie, Tessa Thompson's character, is supposed to be gay. So I'm hoping like, yes. her and Natalie Portman just have like, some romance. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a reason why they keep doing the Captain Marvel and uh, Tessa Thompson thing. Yeah. Um, uh, or maybe they just changed it because that kept getting a lot of publicity. I, I don't know. So what show you know. or what thing are you interested in the most? Uh, I think uh, the WandaVision and how that's going to tie into Doctor Strange is probably uh, my whole thing. Um, I want to see kind of more what the Eternals – I kind of roughly know what the Eternals are. Just um, a lot of that spacey galaxy stuff is, is always pretty neat when Marvel does it. Um, no uh, – no uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 because James Gunn has to finish Suicide Squad 2. Yeah, he, he said that like so. publicly. He's like, oh, we haven't started doing anything with it yet, so older horses. And also Blade is yeah. back uh, with Marshala Ali. I'm also excited for that. Now, Wesley Slamp said, hey, go for it, man. Uh, he, so. should, uh, he should become the bad guy in the new one. Yeah, he should. That'd be great. Uh I'd say the most I'm excited for is actually What If. Like, I love that comic fr- like concept. So having a show based on that should be really good. And really getting to see who actually comes back to reprise roles and who doesn't is, is going to be cool, too. Honestly, I expect everyone to come back. Like, it's they're not... I, I mean, hell, they could get Robert Downey Jr. He's just doing a voice role. Like, he's not having to, you know... Yeah, but Robert Downey Jr. still has to get paid a lot for that voice role. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's less than a physical performance, at least, where you didn't have to train for eight months, like, or like Chris Evans, for example, like, you know, yeah, slightly less of a commitment to do a week of voice acting than months of shooting a movie or something. So what do you think about the no Spider-Man 3? Officially, it did go over a billion. There was rumors going around that. Sony wanted it to hit a billion before they would let Marvel make another one. Well, it did. I don't. So <laughs> it did. So I mean, they'll make a third one because they kind of have to. Because... Yeah, the way they set up the ending yeah. of Far From Home makes it seem like. Also, did you uh, did you yeah. like that? I I saw that. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I like who they got back is Jameson. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know. It, I thought the movie was a little too, it was a tad weird. Like I missed Karen, like the suit AI from the first one. Um, I really like Jake Gyllenhaal, and I don't like Jake Gyllenhaal most of the time. <laughs> you don't like him in Prince of Persia? No. Uh, no, he was really good as a uh, Mysterio. I thought. Yeah. Um, I I didn't care for the hydro man the other vil- like having him basically control the other villain made a lot of sense because um yeah i don't know i i like the way they did the mary jane and and peter stuff i thought that was well done yeah uh we'll see how let's see how they do it go on for the third one well i guess they started looking up looking for venom 2 directors it's a like, good luck with that <laughs> Well, the first one made him a lot of money, so... Yeah. Um, oh, there was one other thing. I forgot. Uh, go on. Uh, Batman Beyond could get a season five if the animated series remaster sells well on Blu-ray. Supposedly. 
so I actually did pre-order that, um, but it's going to piss me off if they make a season five. <laughs> Why? Because the whole series of the thing is, uh, it's, you know, advertised as a complete series of the complete box set. And it's like, well, except well, for this new one. You can just buy making. the Blu-ray of season five when it comes out. And then not fit it in the stupid box, or, you know, they won't have room for it or something. Uh, that's the least of your worries. I think it'd be really cool if they could do that on the DC. That's worth doing on that DC app thing, because a lot of the DC shows apparently are really good. I haven't watched Doom Patrol, but... That's my favorite. Titans is good. Uh, I haven't caught up with Young Justice. And Swamp Thing was good, but they canceled, like, an episode in. So Why? Like... Uh, they claim it was like some creative differences. Oh damn, like, that sucks. Which is BS because like the main guy doing it was James Wan who did Aquaman. So it's like you guys are f- full of it. Like, like I'm, that doesn't I'm, make sense. I'm shocked that Doom Patrol got a season two. I'm happy it did, but is the DC app like doing well subscription wise? They said no, that at all. I don't think so. I think yeah. they've been talking about folding it into some WB app. Well, WB makes, was making their own thing, yeah. Yeah, which makes sense because who's going to just buy a DC app for – or subscribe to a DC app for like four shows? Yeah, that's true. Like, I mean how many people are probably not subscribing to HBO now because Game of Thrones is not yeah, yeah. on it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah – I mean, it, it's it's good. Uh, Batman Beyond could get a season five. Uh, I, that's my favorite Batman. So growing up, well, I, I love Batman Beyond. I had the show on DVD. Is it holds up really well? So I'm, I'm sure Blu-ray up res will look great. Uh, the Orville season three is going to Hulu. Uh, Seth MacFarlane didn't have any bad words to say about anything. He just said Hulu allowed him to do what he wanted to do with the show. Um, I expect yeah. more naughtiness or like nakedness or bad words in the show going forward. Probably, yeah. Uh, um, I still I've only think like halfway through season one, but I enjoy what I saw. Just season one is, I actually think it's pretty bad because of like the forced humor, like especially that uh, Gordon character is like insufferable in the first, first season. Um, but season two is a really marked improvement, like. That was a really good show, like much better than Star Trek uh, Discovery. Um, hey, has, that's good, though. This has me a little worried because I'm sure they're not going to get as much money to make it. And I, you know, I mean, Hulu makes good shows. They have good shows, though. Yeah, but compared to like Fox money, I mean, I don't think there's much, a too, like too much of a comparison. Like there are true, but Fox also has a bad habit of canceling shows. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll watch it. Halloween is getting two sequels. Uh, Halloween Kills is the follow-up to the direct follow-up to the uh, 2018 revival, and then there's Halloween Ends, which will I guess be a sequel to that movie. Um, there, and then this whole series of the trilogy that quickly. Goodness, that's fast. Um. I didn't watch that new Halloween. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah, I have. Uh, I have like no attachment to that franchise yeah. at all. So, I mean, cool if they're they're doing that. That's just really fast to do a trilogy. It feels like we're just getting that out there just to get it out there. But well, hey, whatever, Bloomhouse. You have to get it made before Jamie Lee Curtis dies. So, oh God. Uh, we just went morbid, uh, but Toys That Made Us is getting a season three, yes, and I, that's one of my favorite shows on Netflix, um, it's fun and informative, uh, Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, My Little Pony, and Wrestling Figures are all going to be on that season, what an eclectic, uh, bunch there, and... Actually, uh, within the past few weeks, I bought some Power Rangers toys. <laughs> that, well, yeah, I, I knew you would uh, be totally down for the Power Rangers. Hey, me well, too. They, I loved that when I was a kid. Well, no, they, uh, GameStop had a really good sale on collectibles like a few weeks ago, so I went a little overboard. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not I, to buy. I bought uh, a Morpher 
like the Green Ranger Morpher. Oh yeah, you was, showed it to me. Yeah. Yeah, that was twenty bucks instead of sixty. I bought a Fallout Four plasma rifle. Nice. It's twenty bucks, and the the regular price was like one thirty. <laughs> Even like the the clerk who rang me up, he was shocked. Like he he, he like he had a coworker come out come over and was like looking at the price. Like what the hell is this? And then I had a friend in a different town pick up another toy for me. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I sent him on a mission. <laughs> Hold on. This is hilarious. Sure. My girlfriend can't spell my name correctly. Yeah, she spells it S H E A N. I have no idea how that ever showed what, up or whatever. But... One of those hard four letter four letter names. <laughs> yeah, no. I was like, okay, Sean is either spelled S H A, not S H E. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so um, I'm interested to see how deep they're getting into the wrestling figures thing. Uh, I never had those growing up, but it's still um, cool. Uh, on that front, you were talking about, I, I did pick up some SCCC Funkos because those tend to get hard to come by yeah. if I ever. Uh, Wanted to, you know, go back into... I'm trying to really slim down. Uh, the problem is now I got my uh, girlfriend's, like, 11-year-old nephew into it. He took... I gave him, like, 10 of the ones I had. He took a lot of the... A few of the... A bunch of the anime ones. Uh, mostly Tokyo Ghoul and uh, My Hero Academia, because that's kind of what's in right now for, like, that age range. Um, so... Uh, they have new... My Hero Academia season coming, so I already know I'm going to have to get him a few. It makes it easy for his birthday to get him, <laughs> to know what to get him. But I got, uh, they came out with an Asuka from Evangelion for STCC, so I got that. Uh, I recently rewatched that entire thing on Netflix. That uh, still holds up really well. Um, I know people don't like the last two episodes of the season, but I think between that and the movie, they they ended. It's still weird as fuck, but whatever. <laughs> Um, we'll see what happens when they do the final rebuild movie, and then I'll just watch them all uh, together. And then I got the Doctor Who, the the Pating, whatever yeah. it is. It's uh, from one of the that, really bad episodes of the show. <laughs> yeah, and that's the only ones I got because um, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I think one of the anime ones was like from Ruby, and I don't have that set, so I was like, I'm not gonna start. I'm assuming. Either the Evangelion will get the three different characters at the different cons, or they're going to have commons at some point. I'm not sure. Uh, there's been no announcement about that. Um, they did just announce, I think, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho is getting theirs, and Hunter x Hunter is also uh, for you anime folks there. So, yeah. Uh so as far as games that are coming out, this is not the uh, the biggest thing coming out. It's Madden 20. Um, so football season is really close. About to start preseason games again, which I'm excited about. Except for Ezekiel Elliott, you need to go fucking report to camp when you act like an adult and stop hitting people uh, in your off season. You can request for more money. That's just my thought on that. Um Go let's see if Patrick podcast. Mahomes. Yeah, let's let's see if Patrick Mahomes gets the Madden curse uh, or not. Um, London Detective Mysteria is coming from X Seed. It's a visual novel. Uh, Corpse Killer, the 25th anniversary edition. Uh, All the big hits. Yeah, the Church in Darkness. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'm sorry that neither one of us. Uh, picked up Fire Emblem, Three Houses. Yeah, I kind of want to, or you know, it'd be, it'd be yeah. nice to have, but I figure getting two games in a row is <laughs> pushing my luck as it is. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, I technically have to pay the card with this. I get paid on Friday if you really want to do it. I just know it's really long, <laughs> so that's I've up to like, you. Really, like, I like, it's funny. I've I heard it's like really good, take, though. I like games that take place in a school. Yeah. But I've also... I don't know about you. I've never played a Fire Emblem game, so... This one would be one to play. 
There's some other big game that came out last week that was I can't that think of. At this wasn't that Mula 3? No, that was the week before. Oh. Um, oh, shoot. As the Madden thing goes off. <laughs> yeah, they used to be... Uh, God, why can't I freaking think of it? But well, it'll actually, probably come to me as soon as we stop recording. Texas <laughs> so, Tech came to PC last week. Well, that's uh, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, yeah, we talked about it. Um, that one technically, if not a lot of people own an Xbox One, so unless uh, our good friend Stuart decided to come out of hibernation, to be fair, he has a he has a son and all that stuff that kind of takes up his time, but. Um, no excuses. Yeah, if he came out, unless he came out of hibernation, uh, that might still be there when Adam does his usually second round of, hey, this stuff is still here, I might grab it. I'm a big fan of the Wolfenstein uh, series. See, I, I like that one they made for the three or for the Expo, PS4 a few years ago, like the yeah. old the, classes or the new classes or whatever the hell it's called. That was New good. Order, new classes, yeah. I think. Uh, I did not like Wolfenstein 2 at all. I really disliked that one, actually. Like, they just made it, like, too hard, and they really screwed up the stealth system, I thought. And especially on PC, it didn't run that well. So I was like, nope, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's going to do it for the show this week. We'll be back... Probably a few days early because my uh, girlfriend comes back into town really early on Thursday morning. Uh, so our regular time will probably be Friday night ish, n- night ish, mm-hmm. uh, Saturday early morning. <laughs> um, so yeah, look for us then. If you uh, like what you heard, Apple did. Did give uh, there's now an official video games category along with all the other categories that they made more specific now. Um, so if you happen to find us for the first time, this is the first time you listen to us. Thank you. Uh, you can find us on all of those uh, podcast catchers that are out there, uh, including Spotify. And uh, until uh, the next show, hit subscribe if you like this. You can write a review on iTunes or wherever it is you listen. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Later.